come on in. Let's stick that on there. That's recording. <laughs> okay. Now. So we can stop with all of the noisy jokes. <coughs> nonsense. Money, yes. Right? Yes. Nonsense. No, no more smut from you. This is a clean. <laughs> this is a family podcast. <laughs> okay. And action. <laughs> Cue music. <laughs> And that is actually where I put the music in. Uh, so hello. Um, hello Paul. I never know quite how to start these things because we've been chatting for about half half an oh, hour, at least. forty-five minutes. Yeah. And it's free flowing and it's all really natural. And then I hit record and a little light comes on and both of us stilted st- immediately. Yeah, we sat up. And, okay. Now yeah. we have to watch what we're saying. We do have to be. So uh, to set the scene, I am sitting in the most beautiful farmhouse lounge. Well, it's not really a farmhouse, is it? It's a farmhouse. Well, it was. You're not a farmer. No, I'm not a farmer. No, I'm not a farmer. It was a farm. It that's was right. a farm. And it was, it is a farmhouse. It's, it's um, beautiful. Yeah, thank you. It's beautiful. It's also got the nicest sound of anywhere I've ever recorded. Silence. A, well, it's got this really, listen, there's yeah, no echo dead. at all. It's all your soft furnishings. It is. Too many cushions. Oh, it's just sumptuous and soft. There's cushions and more. Yes, it does. As a, as a male... There's a lot of soft furniture. Too many cushions. It? Yeah, there's too many cushions. I, I, I think I'd very quickly... Oh, really? There's too many cushions. Simon's very tolerant. Is he? <laughs> on so many levels, I on, suspect on that so to be the truth. Paul. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So I'm I sitting do. here with Melanie, an extraordinary, an extraordinary lady. And I, that's all right, isn't it? That's all right. You can that's say right. that. I'll let that go yeah. through. I know. You never, yeah, With this day and age, you never thought about gender. Can you say an extraordinary lady? But an extraordinary photographer. And certainly an extraordinary person and a newborn photographer is that's your specialism it is you have an ism do you have an ism that is and newborn photography is it but you were a lawyer to start with i was i was i was um a lawyer i specialized in personal injury and clinical negligence right and i met my husband simon in the same law firm and we very quickly became an item and then we decided that well we'll get married and then we talked about having children and it was at that stage that I thought, actually, I don't think I want to continue to be a lawyer because I knew that I didn't want to go back part time. I knew I would if I was going to go back to work, I'd have to go back part time um, because we have a lifestyle that we like. And but I also wanted to be around for my baby, our baby. Um, so I thought, well, I, I don't really want to go back to law. What am I going to do? Um, so I waited till I was pregnant and then dropped the nice little bombshell on Simon and said, I don't want to go back to law. And he went very quiet and said, okay, what are you going to do then? I said, well, I quite fancy being a photographer. And I'd always been, it's it's so cliched, but I had always been interested in photography. I'd always taken lots of photographs. I learned on film, just loved it and thought no I'm I'm going to do this um because it seems to me it's a career that you can work around your family um and at that time we lived in a little cottage a listed little cottage with an outbuilding that was tiny and it was dilapidating because that was I think that was yes it was also listed so we couldn't knock it down so we had to do something with it so we um we renovated it and it was 12 feet by 8 feet big then huge (laughs) (laughs) massive so we we renovated this and that became my studio and um I started off actually doing young children and it was always it's you know how a lot of photographers start off photograph friends children um to see whether or not the space worked, to see yeah. whether it was something that I actually enjoyed, which I did very quickly, grew to love it. And then decided, actually, I want to do babies. Right. I want to do newborns. Um, but I'm going to have to learn how to do it. I can't just photograph newborns without knowing what I'm doing. Why? What, what drew you to newborns? <laughs> Other than 12 feet by 8 feet. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the deciding well, factors, say, actually. Because well they're tiny. <laughs> Tiny, they'd fit in my studio, so yeah. that was a bonus. Um, what drew me to newborns, it, it really, it was because it's the only real time in your life when you change so quickly. And babies develop and change within the blink of an eye. 
And before you know it, you are, you've suddenly got a six month old and you look back and you think, actually, where did that time go? I was, well, actually when I had Amelia, I was tired. I I take my hat off to anybody who comes into my studio with a newborn baby because you're tired, you haven't slept, you're exhausted on every level. Um, And I thought, you know, actually, this such a, it's such a lovely time to document for people. But I can't just pick up a baby and start photographing. I need to learn how to do it. And I need to learn uh, the lawyer in me kicking in. I've got to do it (laughs) safely. I don't want to be sued. Thank you very much. So I went to America and I learned from Anna Brandt, um, who's a huge um, global name. Um, And I came back and lots of model calls because I thought I'm not going to just start a website with... um, with with stuff that I'm doing for clients and pop it on and know oh, that's a baby and that's the okay, case so that'll go on the website. I wanted a strong portfolio. Yep. As soon as I've got a strong portfolio, I will then launch the newborn side of the business. So that's what I did. So I model call, model call, model call. So were you still shooting clients. other portraits? I, st- at this stage? I was because I had to bring in an income. Right. You know, Simon and I have a lifestyle that we enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm sitting in it. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> it's hard work. Um, but we have a lifestyle that we enjoy and we knew also that we wanted to educate our daughter privately and that's expensive yeah. and luckily we only have one child because yeah. I couldn't do two or three I don't know how people do it um, so we so yes yeah, so I specialised in newborn and loved it really really loved it and I've never looked back and I still do. I do the majority of my work is newborns, but I also, of course, do six months old, 12 months old, age two, age three. You know, because once you photograph somebody's newborn and you've done a great job, yeah. before you know it, you become their family photographer and you're creating. You know, I, I photograph children now that I, I photographed 12, 13, 14 years ago. Did I see you sneak a wedding in the other day? You did. Yeah, how I was do that? 10 weddings a year. Right. There was a stage back in 2006, 2007, where I was photographing probably 20 weddings a year. Um, Because it gave me certainty, it's very different from portraiture. It gives you certainty of cash flow. You know, and back in 2006, 2007, people were booking two, two and a half years in advance. It's not... It's a bit different now. It's different now, completely Mm. different. So I liked the certainty. I liked the £500 booking fee that I would never spend... Incidentally, that's well worded. I hear so many people call it a deposit. It's not a deposit. Not a You're deposit. talking to a lawyer. Come on. Yeah, yeah, no, it's quite right. I've, I've done. I've, <laughs> we have a non-refundable booking fee. That's because a you non-refundable can, a booking non-refundable fee. deposit does not exist absolutely, under English law. Absolutely, absolutely right. So, I liked the five hundred pounds booking fee. I would never spend it until the wedding was done because you never, you didn't know what yeah. was going to happen. But even so, it was as far as I was concerned, it was non-refundable. Yeah. But the cautious side of me would put it in a separate account, and yeah. that's the booking fees. Um, and I knew that in 2006, I would then get £3,000 next August, yep. out of which £500 or £400 would be the album. So you knew yep. what your income was going to be to a certain extent. And then I dropped weddings for, um, for a while, a long time, thinking, actually, I'd, I'd gone to the point where I didn't have time to do them. Mm. Um, and I thought, actually, I'm not so sure now. I, I'm busy, busy, busy with newborns. Uh, and also, of course, I started my training business. Um, and that was busy. So I thought, oh, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm going to do weddings anymore. And then I come back to doing them. So I only do 10 a year. And I still love them. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, I, I do love them. Because that's a very different thing. I mean, there's elements that you're out of control with newborn. Yes. But not to the extent you are with a wedding. Well, you can't reshoot a wedding. No, we can't reshoot we well, suppose you could reshoot. Well, you you could yeah, reshoot within the if you're quick, yeah, you can do it. Um, but you, but of course, a wedding day, you are it's it's fast paced and you don't have any control of the situation re- really. I mean, yeah. you've got control of things such as you know group shots and composition right. and and, and you you managing your along, lighting but... <laughs> and you can nudge it along. But other than that, um, and I always I always enjoyed the weddings and yeah. I still enjoy those that I that I take and I'm yeah. I'm particular about what I take because I'm yeah. only taking ten. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, but my specialism is is newborn photography. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you because you what was what I made me smile 
was when you used the term uh, booking fee. Mm. Now, for someone like me, I mean, I had to go and learn that lesson. But for someone like you as a lawyer, I mean, if you've brought that knowledge, mm. working knowledge of law, even if it's a different mm. part of law, and the law is vast. You know, mm. my daughter's just studied that for the past three years. So mm. I understand law is huge. But you have that way of thinking. Lawyers do think that way. Yes. Do you think that's useful? It's when you set hugely up a useful. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's invaluable, actually. Um, all photographers should train as lawyers first. <laughs> <laughs> it would save a whole lot of, of problems. Um, no, I... I do have a very analytical mind, <clears throat> excuse me, and I do, um, and I'm business minded. Yeah. And so there's all sorts of things that, that are automatic to me that perhaps might not be automatic to other photographers. But interestingly, though, when I had my, my contract for, for um, weddings, I had them drawn up by a specialist contract lawyer. Yeah. Um, I didn't take one off the internet. I didn't actually didn't even use an association one because I wanted it to be absolutely watertight. Yeah. Um, so I obviously I believe in in law and good yeah. lawyers, um, and I, I remember spending a lot of money having that done. But I knew then that that, that wasn't going to have any problems. Yeah. Um, and I think you, you can't go wrong with that. We did. We yeah, funny enough, we did exactly the same. The only thing we did, so I had this beautiful contract drawn up, and it was a good, probably three pieces of A4. It was a good contract. Yes. And in the end, I went back to the nice lawyer who we'd employed. You know, we paid proper money and went to a, like you. Mm. I believe in if you're going to get something done, do it properly. Do it properly. Yes. Don't do it on the cheap. And we and the contract has lasted a long time because it's not like law. Mm. And, I mean, bit, there are subtleties where it evolves, but not that. But much. contract law, yeah. not, yes. And uh, the only thing was, it was so watertight that I had to say to go, look, we're going to take these clauses out. I can't remember where they were, but it had everything in there. Yes. I mean, it was just everything. And I said, we are going to take those out. And he said, well. You can, of course, but that does leave you open to the possibility of being pursued should these things yes. go wrong. And I said, well, yes, but if I leave them in, I'll have no clients. You won't have any clients. <laughs> I, and you know, I did the same thing with my contract. I remember going through it and thinking, oh, that's a bit, oh, yeah. I'm not sure about that. That's a bit tough. And that's a bit. And Simon said, well, you have this drawn up to protect both parties. Why are you? I said, I wouldn't book yeah. me on if that's I was right. reading that's this contract. <laughs> At the end of the day, a, a guy I worked for at Accenture, because um, I used to draw up the big uh, contracts for the projects we did because mm. you get to a level and that's primarily what you look after you look mm. after the budgets and the contracts and so I oversaw them and he said he said you can't do you cannot build a contract that's watertight it's not possible mm. because if you did the contract would be worth more than the job itself because mm. you'd be at it forever what you're doing is essentially deciding do you love each other enough to get in bed together yes, <laughs> and if the answer to that is true yes. it's a prenup yes all right you're describing <laughs> your relationship with enough detail and clarity that if something goes wrong, you've got something to refer to. But if it goes wrong, it's gone wrong. Mm. So don't overdo it, but mm. do have enough. Mm. And I think that was quite sound advice, actually. Yes, I agree I've with that. that. Yes. Um, but it's interesting, that, that you, because one of the things I've always admired about you, I've known you quite a long time now, mm. is the fact that you are tremendously creative. And I love your work. But whenever I've spoken to you, I'm talking to a business person. <clears> You're not the first person to have said yeah. that. It's, it's interesting because um, Jeremy, our mutual friend, Jeremy Price, I remember when I was in, the first time I taught in Italy, so three years ago, and Jeremy has always known me as primarily really a business person. Mm. And then he saw me work with newborn babies and said, I couldn't believe it was the same person. Mm. You're completely different yeah. when you're working yeah. with babies yeah, or, so with, or with children or, who, yeah. or whomever. Yeah, so just to clarify, Jeremy Price is the UK Managing Director of Graphic Studio. That's or right, yes. the Managing Director of Graphic Studio UK. I yes. have no idea the exact Graphy order Studio of UK, words. Graphic Studio UK, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he can clarify that. He can well, clarify I'll put it in that. the footnotes. Yes. Um, but it, uh, the reason I'm smiling is I, I've seen you at proper extremes. I've seen you, and you do that business person thing. You, t- you do it like this and you, you've got your hands and you do a proper, you know, businessy. You, I don't know if this is translating onto a podcast. I know exactly. You know what I mean? That kind of, yes. no, you charge this. No, this is what we're yes. going to do. And there's no ifs and buts. And I'm yes. hoping that sound it's comes across. It's very clear cut. But equally, I've seen you stood on the side of a stage before presenting and you're a true creative because you're in bits. You're kind mm. of, you know, <laughs> I hope this is going to be all right. Yes, now. because I and think, you know, because... You know, a lot of photographers say to me, I'm nervous before my shoot. And I say, that's great. That's right. That's a brilliant thing. Because in a, why, why? Because it means you care yeah. about what you're doing. And it means you care that you're going to do a great job for your client. And actually, I've always said, the moment that I don't get 
those butterflies will be the moment I give it up. Yeah. Because well, you, well, you won't. You'll do a bad gig is what you'll do. That's, <laughs> that's, how, that's actually it. Cause I, that, I mean, that won't happen. <laughs> well, the thing, I remember so, I, I've told this story numerous times, but the parallel is the same. You, you, you have to care. You have to be passionate. But the problem with that mm. is comes fear and adrenaline. Well, yeah, that's true. Yes. They, they're just part and parcel. Yes, Stage yes. fright is just a, is just yes. a byproduct of, of being passionate about yes. something. But I remember as a drummer, I remember one night I wasn't worried. Terrible gig. Really? terrible gig I mean, yeah. it was all there but there was yeah. no fire to it you know because yes. i wasn't scared yes and from that point forwards i was always scared yes and then if i wasn't scared i suddenly realized i wasn't scared and became and so scared then you would it become was going scared. to be a bad gig. Yes. And so yes. in the end it's just yes. a way of generating the necessary yeah. heightened reactions yes. and all of the passion that goes into it that's really interesting i mean you know it's things when i'm teaching small groups I still get a little bit nervous beforehand because I want to make sure that every photographer gets more than they ever thought they were going to learn. That's what I want them to do. Yeah. I want them to go away and be inspired and I want them to be excited about their future and what they can create and what's possible for their business. Um, when I'm on a big stage, the photography show or something like that, that's when they say we've got 45 minutes and you've got big <laughs> mic'd up like Michael McIntyre. <laughs> this big that's microphone true. in front of your face. Yeah. Um, and that's when I think, I remember the first time I did it, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, and there's a lot of people there and you're, you're just, okay, deep breaths, just going to you know go out and do it. And of course, as soon as you start speaking, well, for me yeah. anyway, as soon as I start shooting or as soon as yeah. I start speaking, the nerves disappear yeah. and you just do your job. Yeah. Um, do you find... Because for all of us, and this is a podcast I will do in the next coming few weeks, um, the differences between the performance and the act, and they are slightly different things, a performance and an act. But when you go on stage, clearly it's a performance. Do you find the same love when you're performing as a newborn photographer, when you're performing as a trainer, or when you're performing almost literally as a performer? Do I find it the same? Do you enjoy it the same? I enjoy it just as much. Yeah. I enjoy creating and photographing for my clients just as much as I enjoy training photographers and I get a real buzz when I see something that a photographer that I have trained yeah. has created yeah. because I think wow they've act they've gone away and yeah. they've implemented what they were taught and they are now growing as a photographer and I, I just get so excited about what they can now do and where their business can now grow so I think that all of it just gives me a buzz. I mean, I've been doing this now 15 years, yeah. not training. I was, training. Doing, I, was, I was doing the maths because obviously yes. Amelia's just done Amelia's just the GCSEs. finished the GCSE. She is nearly 17. That's right. So you must have been doing it. You must have made that decision about 17 years ago, yes. give or take from the stories yeah. I've yeah. heard from you. That's so right. It's a long time to be to be following this one dream. Isn't it, it is. And it's, it's something, as people say to me, would you ever go back to law and... I don't miss law. I still actually, I'm still very interested in law. Yes. I mean, I'm reading great books at the moment. I'm reading The Secret Barrister, which is a great yeah, book. Yeah, I've read that book. It's a great book. I'm reading yeah. Under the Wig. It's a great book. I'll watch all the legal dramas. I'll criticise them and I will sit here and <laughs> criticise them. The fact that they haven't, oh, they haven't researched that properly. And this yeah. isn't right and that yeah. isn't right. You know, and I'm still very interested in law. Um, but I wouldn't, what I want, people say, don't, never say no. But I've been out of law now for a long time. Um Actually, when I started my business, I kept in with law. I kept in with all the changes, thinking just in case this yeah. doesn't work, yeah. I need to be able to go back. I, d I did the same with technology. Yeah, you know, I, I've got to have a backup plan. <laughs> this is, you know, just in case this yeah. doesn't work, what am I going to yeah. do? How you long know? did it take you to get the business on its feet? So let's, let's. Uh, I, I'm going to make some assumptions. Mm. Let's let's assume. Let's use Amelia's birth date let's mm. use that as the start point because it's an easy one to track mm. so let's say that was the beginnings of it in true mm. yeah i mean obviously it wasn't because you're exhausted and you've got a newborn baby yes, but yes. you start yes. to think and you start to build and yes. you start to pre-visualize yes it. how long before you'd got a business as we would know it not the business you have now clearly i would say it took me about 18 months right to two years yeah um Remember, of course, I had a young child, yeah. um, but I knew very quickly that I wanted to replace my salary. This was never, for me, this was never a hobby. Yeah. This was never going to be, oh, well, you know what? 
I've got a baby now. I've yeah. got a child now. And I'm going to, let's just see what happens. If I make some money, great. Mm. That was never the plan. You know, this was always going to be, you know, this is a business. Yeah. And I'm trying to teach a lot more photographers, a lot more, particularly people who are going into photographers or even established newborn photographers that actually you're running a business. Yeah. That no matter how much you love it, yeah. it's either a hobby or it's a business. Yeah. There's no in between, really. Yeah. So... You, you have know, no idea how happy this makes me. By yeah, the way. It's just... but it's you know it's it's so true. Yeah. And I and I for me it was always going to be a business. It was always going to replace my salary, um, because we had Simon and I have had plans, have plans, um, and so I went into it from the beginning that you know th this is what you know I, this is what my pricing is going to be. I'm not going to start low. That's mm -hmm. not me. I'm not starting low. I have trained. I've spent a lot of money on training. I'm always, you know, whether it's podcasts or TED Talks or whatever yeah, it is, yeah. I'm always continually training. Yeah. Um, and so therefore, and I want to be paid what I believe I'm worth. And there is a certain amount of arrogance in that <laughs> because you have to be, you have to be confident about it. Yeah. And even if you're not confident about it, you have to pretend to be confident about it. So let me ask you a it. question. And this is one that there's a few people listening to this who'd recognise this, which is when you start... You're not actually doing that many shoots. No, not to begin with. And particularly if you price quite high, mm. so you, or you you price as an established photographer. Mm. How did you handle the pressure of knowing each of those jobs? You, know, you might only be shooting once every two weeks to start mm. with, mm. but th those jobs then become quite they become an opportunity of fixation. Yes. If you're not careful, how did you overcome that? Or is it just you know being a lawyer anyway? That's part of what you're trained in. I don't think I've ever overcome it. Right. Actually, I mean, I think because, because it goes back to that uncertainty. Okay. I mean, I my business model has always been built on low volume, high spend. Yeah. That is how I wanted it from the beginning. And it's never changed because that's how I wanted it. Yeah. I was never going to be and never wanted to be a bums on seats photographer. Yeah. I, I was never going to be free session. Oh, I hope they buy something. I wanted people to invest in me yeah. as a photographer, realise that I can create beautiful work for them and invest in that yeah. and pay what yeah. they should be paying for it. Um, how did I overcome the fear of it? I suppose I just had self-belief. Yeah. And, and there were times where I would doubt and think, oh, God. And, and you think, where's the next commission? When's yeah. I used to say to Simon, I haven't got any work for next. In fact, it's interesting. I'd say to him, I haven't got any work for September. You know, this is going back, you know, yeah. what, 15? And he'd say, well, neither have I. And I said, what are you talking about? You're yeah, employed. Yeah, he said, no. Yeah. He said, I'm employed, but I'm on three months' notice. Yeah. He said, and we're talking now in June, and you're saying you haven't got any work in September, neither have I. I thought, that's a really interesting way of thinking about interesting it. Interesting and slightly scary when the two of you yes. in that conversation <laughs> at the same time. And I said, well, let's not think about that. Yeah. <laughs> let's you're not 12 think foot about by 8 foot, what could we use that for what, what else could that be? So, yeah, so I... It goes back, you know, and I think probably actually one of those things was one of the reasons why I went into weddings was actually let's have a bit more certainty yeah. here. Yeah. Let's have, you know, X amount of booking fees coming in and then your remainder coming in two years later. You yeah. knew that two years down the line or 18 months or whatever, yeah. you've got this amount of money. Plus, yeah. of course, the portraits that, that I'd shoot and so forth. Um, but I think you, you have to you have to have self-belief. Um, and you have to you have to work very hard. So and, let me ask and, you an extension of this question. Yes. Which is inevitably there are going to be people who use your services and then don't spend the way you would like or the way you've planned. And, and, and unless you're superhuman, and maybe you are, and that just doesn't happen to you, it happens to most people. Mm. How do you then deal with the psychology of those one or two, which because it could be another, it's, In, one, of the, it's one of the risks of having it, a low-volume business. It is a risk of having a low-volume business. But I, in the early days, it doesn't happen now, actually, but in the early days, yes, there would be people who would not spend what I had hoped they would spend. And you have to deal with it. You just have to, you know, you look at your projections and you'd look at it and you think, okay, well, this month, I've got a bit less money. You yeah. know, and, and, and but then, of course, there would always be the clients that would make up for that. And yeah. it's sort of in the beginning, it's like a um, heart monitor. Yeah. 
you know what I mean with the yeah. peaks and the troughs yeah. um and but now but I soon learned I have to target my client right who is my client yeah and as soon as I worked out who my client is who are they what do they value what's important to them I can target them then I'm targeting people who will spend the money yeah. and it isn't about people who have got necessarily a lot of disposable income it's about the people who value what you do and what you can create and who value family portraits yeah. and newborn portraits. So how have you found them? How have you targeted them? I've created my I've created an avatar of my ideal client. And I have thought to Describe myself them. Okay. My ideal client. <laughs> you knew it was, I was always going to get it was there. coming. Yeah. Who is my ideal client? My ideal client is somebody who loves tangible items they love they might shop in the white company for example yeah. i use the white company when i teach photographers business i use the white company a lot as an example yeah. because when i go into the white company i love the way everything's very tangible and yeah. the, the fabrics are very soft and the, the, the clothing is beautiful and the colors are very very muted yeah. and I, I love everything about the white company so i know i can go in there and i can spend much to my husband's dismay, <laughs> quite a lot of money on some Egyptian <laughs> yeah. cotton bedding, for yeah. example, yeah. Um, that I could probably get um, in, I don't know, Debenhams. But it wouldn't be the same because it's not the white company. <laughs> it's the whole yeah. branding, isn't yeah. there? There's the whole brand yeah. loyalty there. Um, I've forgotten the question. Was, uh, was, <laughs> you led it that you're out. Describing, you're describing your <laughs> my ideal client. Of course I am. Avatar. So my ideal client, they, they shop in somewhere like the white company because they love nice things around them. They love art. They are people who, who value... I'm not going to say value their children. Everybody values their children, yeah. but value memories and want them on the wall or in an album. Yeah. They're people that, that are not interested in a quick fix. In other words, people who are not interested in just digitals. Yeah. Um, they are people who, more than anything, love what I create. Yeah. So that, and they want that for themselves. Yeah. It's a lovely way of doing it is the idea of an avatar. Mm. I mean, I've, we've done the same exercise. Mm. I can describe Yes. I can describe the client I'd love to have. I mean, you, yes. that clearly doesn't encompass well, There's two different things, aren't there? The client, they, oh, yeah. well, they don't necessarily have to be, but yeah. they are, you In know. In my mind's eye. And I used to think, you know, when I first started, I used to think, think the ideal client is a person with a lot of money. No, it isn't. No. It isn't at, at all. all. Of course it isn't. In, in fact. But that was my naivety. Yeah. No matter how business minded I was, my yeah. my naive I didn't know enough about the photography industry yeah. or under, didn't understand at the beginning actually how important it is to find out who who is your client, yeah. what do their like and dislikes, you know, it's, what it's, do they what do they do, what are their hobbies? Yeah, it's all about prioritizing. Yeah, how they prioritize. How do they prioritize? Is it? I remember very clearly um, somebody turning up to. Um, I had a studio in a, a couple of villages away. Um, a high street studio if you like but not a busy high street um and i can remember i had an ordering session coming at about six o'clock and my husband happened to be there fixing the skirting board or something like that something useful <laughs> good old simon good old simon is there anything he's no good at no he's just done the paving outside is he really? Great. I, I admired it actually it looks really nice <laughs> please do come and admire it It'd be thrilled. i did i was coming in because we're about to do our backyard so i said well that's quite nice i didn't realize simon didn't it i should drop him a note <laughs> Any free time, Simon? Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, and he was doing something like he's, and this client turned up in a, a very, I can't remember what the car was now, but it's a very expensive car. And he said, gosh, they're going to spend a lot of money. I said, no. What that tells me, probably their priority is their car. Yeah. I might be wrong, but I would say that somebody who spends £90,000 on a car, the priority is the car. So they've either spent all the money on the car and have nothing yeah. left for portraits, or they're just, you know, and actually, I think it was an average spend, you know. Yeah. Um, it was a you know, it's a nice spend, but it, yeah. it wasn't high and it wasn't low. Yeah. Um, but I and I remember Simon saying, "Well, what, what do you mean?" And I said to him, "You know what? It's not about how much money." I can remember clearly a client that came to me and said, "We've saved up for these newborn pictures. To us, these newborn pictures <clears throat> are just as important as the car seat." And I remember thinking, "Wow." And then being under a huge yeah. pressure. That's thinking, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, God, I this baby <laughs> sleeps, you know. Yeah. Um, but I can remember them saying it and me thinking, gosh, hmm. And that taught me quite a lot. 
it, it was a real, it sort of grounded me a bit. And I thought, gosh, you know, actually, these are people who have really saved up for this. Yeah, I've, I've had, I had one wedding client. I remember the meeting clearly. And I remember, and I'm going to try and describe this carefully because it's, it's meant to be a really nice story. And I don't want it to sound worse than that. Um, I knew they couldn't afford me. I was, the minute I met them, the mm. venue was not an expensive venue particularly. It was a nice mm. venue. Mm. And I knew from what he said that he couldn't afford me. And But I, you know, as you do, you go through it. And, mm. and he and his fiancée met me and we had a, a drink. And at the end of the meeting, he said, I can't afford you, funnily enough. And my heart sank because that's an afternoon of my time. I've mm -hmm. gone out onto a location. It was in the days when I used to go out to the hotel to meet them there. The, yes, the venue, yes. Which I, I don't do anymore. Yes, I used to do that. Yeah, you very quickly learn that that's a lot of you, time. You suddenly remember, uh, so, no, not necessary. No, not anymore. Um, and he said, I can't afford you. And I, my heart sank. And he said, so I'm going to do extra shifts. Mm. And I nearly cried. I nearly, mm. you know, he just wanted it to be the photography we create. Mm. And he valued it so much, or they valued it so much, he mm. was going to work double shifts mm. for the next year to mm. pay for it. And those are the clients. It's very humbling, isn't it? Well, those are the clients you love. Those yes. are the clients you yes. cry over. And it doesn't yes. matter where they are in the, you know, whether they're high earners or mm. not. It's if they love your photography mm. that much. Mm. Those are the guys who make you cry, no matter what the spend is. That's right. It is. It, it is. It's, it's really the spend is, is it sort of relevant? Because obviously you're running a business. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it yeah. is the clients that I love are those that value what I do yeah. and that I know will love their newborn or their child portraits or family portraits for, forever. Yeah. You know, and, and they're not going to languish on a hard drive. Yeah. You know. So it's, it's interesting hearing you talk about creating this this avatar, and of course, over the, your career, and I've I've had the the pleasure of working alongside you for quite a long time, mm. um, in and out of the MPA and various other places, and then watching you, watching what you're doing develop and expand. Of course, now you're as passionate about training new photographers as mm. you have been about creating these images for yourself. Why? Why that passion? Why that drive to I train? I think, well, you know, it started, I didn't ever think I'm going to start a training business. That, that actually wasn't on the, the business plan. When I wrote my business plan, it wasn't on it. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you for the avatar of your trainee, but I won't. Best not. No, we, could be, we could be there for a long time. <laughs> we'll be there a long time. Um, so I, you know, I, I, I was asked one day, will you teach me how to do this? I remember thinking, oh, gosh, no, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, no, because I, I, I didn't know whether I could teach because there, there's two different things here. There's the ability to create yeah. and light um, and compose and all of those things to create beautiful imagery. And then there's an ability to teach. And I was concerned. I thought, actually, I don't know if I can teach. I've never taught before. I don't know if I'm going to be a good teacher. And yeah. I'm somebody that if I do something, I have to do it properly. There's no half measures with me. So I didn't want to put me myself in the position where I was doing a job that wasn't... Yes, I knew I could create beautiful newborn images, but could I actually teach how to do it properly and effectively across? I didn't want to put myself in that position in case I didn't get it right. And I didn't want to put the delegate in that situation um, either yeah. in case they didn't get out of me what they wanted. Yeah. Um, so the initial commission I turned down um, and then trying to think what my first I think it was the MPA I'm sure it was the MPA asked me it was Claire Louise asked yeah. me will you run a workshop for us um 25 people thinking oh my goodness I've just turned down one person and I'm being asked to teach 25 people so I thought right the only way I'm going to know if I can do this is to do it it's the only way and it was a two-day event um up in Birmingham or Coventry or I think it was Coventry because Coventry. I, I was chair of the MPA I think you did you, you came I to came, one of them and yes. I think you used Meg my then assistant I did that's right I did and I, I kind right. of pushed her forward and so you go you could pay attention that's right she yeah. assisted throughout the whole right. thing didn't you? she that's right because I thought she'd learn a lot more if I put her at the front <laughs> <laughs> she did she loved it, it wilt at the back otherwise it was too hot it was hot in that room it was warm in that room so um yeah so I remember doing that and I remember the feedback that I got from the MPA at that point. I've still got the emails, actually. Um, really blew me away. Um, 
and the feedback that I got from the delegates. And actually, I'm still training some of those delegates. I have ongoing mentoring with me, which is yeah. lovely yeah. because they're just progressing and you see them progress and that's lovely. Um, but... And I remember thinking, I remember loving it, absolutely loving the light bulb moments that I could see happening with these photographers. But moreover than that, I have a real passion about newborn safety. I was going to come on to that. We'll, we'll come on to that. But, but I, and I wanted, I thought, if I'm going to teach, I have a responsibility yeah. here. I have responsibility not only to the baby that's modelling for me and the parents yeah. that are sitting watching my every move. But I've got a responsibility to 25 delegates there and to the MPA to show them how to do it properly, how to do yeah. it safely and why we don't yeah. do certain things and why we do certain things. Anyway, the feedback um, from that first two-day workshop was phenomenal. And I've never looked back on that either. Yeah. So I thought, right, OK, I can do this. Yeah. Um, and so I started to train photographers and I one-to-ones and workshops and... Um, and love, I love it. Do you find you're more creative in a workshop? Um, yes. Well, I think it's tricky. I think yes, I am in a workshop because you are te you're teaching photographers. And so that's not to say I'm not creative. I have to be careful what I say. I have clients listening to this, Paul. You know, I don't want clients sitting listening to this yeah. thinking. I didn't mean it thinking, like that. Thinking, well, she's not creative for us. You know. Well, let me, let, let me put a box around it so you get the, the frame in which I'm talking is I find when I'm training, it's incredibly liberating and I don't know why. Mm. There's something about being, whether I'm recording a well, video I, I think or... I think also is, of course, when you're, when you're training and you're creating, you're creating for the photographers yeah. and for you because yeah. you've got a model. And of course, for the parents, but... But this is not a fee-paying session from the from the parents, and they will end up with some beautiful images. But yeah. you don't have a brief to work to which to work, do you? You, you don't it's have. The freedom. I think it's, it's the, the freedom. I think it's the freedom. I can set my own pathway through it. Yes. And I can say I'm going to illustrate this. Whereas, obviously, when you're working to a client, and you're like me, you know, your client is is very close to you. Yes. It's not like a commercial gig. No, no, no. You know, I'm I'm pointing my camera either at the person who commissioned me yes. or an offspring or a relative of the person who commissioned mm -hmm. me. And of course, you're trying to work to a, not a brief, but you're not... Well, it's different. You're, you're not trying, you're not creating necessarily. It, it depends what, what I'm teaching. If I'm teaching a, a, a masterclass on how to create award-winning images that are going to win competitions... Yeah then that's a totally different tuition than somebody who wants to learn, say, beanbag poses for a newborn yeah. and know, you know, how do I get 30 pictures? Yeah. So it, it's different. Yeah. It depends what I'm teaching. Yeah. Obviously, if I'm teaching beanbag work, there's only so much creativity that can go on with a baby on a beanbag. Yeah. Um, really, that's about posing and lighting and angles and, you yeah. know. Um, when you're doing creativity, well, it's just... Oh, you can see, and no one can see, but I'm beaming now yeah, because yeah, yeah. the minute that I think of creativity, I'm it's just thinking, gosh, it's like being in a candy shop. That's it. That's exactly it. Isn't it? What should we try next? Yes, what, what should we do, <laughs> you know? Um, and I was blessed actually to have, not me, to have model twins yeah. um, in Italy in April this year. And that was great because I you know, decided I was going to do this this tree and I, I, I'm not a believer in digital backdrops. Um, that's not, I mean, I think they said their purpose and they can be great. They're not my thing because a, you're such a lawyer uh, well it's not it's not they're not my thing because it's not my creativity is it yeah. no no i agree with if you. you're using a digital background and photographers out there who use them will now hate me for this but if you are using a digital background they're great and they can be wonderful for fussy babies and and, and you know they're great inventions and they're wonderful i don't use them i want to be creative i want to be the person that thinks of what i'm going to do and and puts it together mm -hmm. rather than than you know popping a baby into it. Well, I'm going to add a, I'm going to add a footnote to that for you because you haven't drawn on it. Is if you do use to anyone who's listening to this that uses digital backgrounds, remember that it means you can't enter them into competitions. Thank you so much. Yes, that's really important <laughs> um, because I think well they're less, out there, less said but about they that, get the better. Caught. Yes, yes. You will get you will get found out. And yeah. as somebody discovered last year at the SWPP, yes, it can be quite catastrophic. Yes. For that person, if you get, if you suddenly discover that you're in breach of the rules, I don't think that person necessarily thought that through. I think perhaps, you know, the rules that come through, sometimes people just don't read them. That's it's right. just, you know, you, think about you it. don't think it's about it. You're doing it every day and you're okay. thinking, well, this is beautiful. I'll pop this in. But actually, it's half somebody else's work. That's right. Um, 
you know, so, so yeah, so I, I do, I, I love to be creative with photographers. I love to be creative with clients. And sometimes a client will say to me, I want one special piece. Yeah. I don't want... Oh, I love that. I love it. I don't yeah, want 20 pictures. Or th- I yeah, just yeah. want one. one. And then I can, you can really talk to the client about, okay, talk to me about what, what's... I'll find out about their whole family. You know, what's important? What does this baby... Is this your first baby? You know, you're finding out a story. <laughs> is this, if it's their second, is that we didn't have any photos done last time, but we want a really nice picture yeah, of this Yeah, a really one. nice picture, exactly. <laughs> I and mean, can you just, you know... And you're kind of thinking, oh, we're, we're, we're causing problems down yeah, the line. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Is this your favourite child? <laughs> So it's, you know, um, being able to create something with um, with a client. I see it very much as a joint collaboration with a client. It isn't me saying we're doing this. It's finding out about them, um, you know, and, and, and coming up with a concept, if you like, and, and being commissioned to do one of those. I mean, they they take a long... I mean, one of those masterpieces can take me four hours in the yeah. studio. You know, in yeah. that time, I could have done 25 pictures of a... Yeah. normal baby pictures if you like um, that'll take four or five hours never mind the two three hours it takes me to come up with the concept yeah. or even longer you know yeah. but but I do love commissions like that yeah they're, they're they nice. keep you creative they keep you fresh oh they're wonderful when you get someone like that I, said, yeah. you know, I had one the other day she said I want one big picture yeah on the wall of our son no smiling don't yeah. need any of that I want something I'm going to look at every day yes and I hit it on shot one fantastic literally yeah, I, and I you have, know when you get that feeling where you've nailed it. Well, the thing was, I laugh because I've got, you know, they're here for probably two hours. Exactly, you can't see, you can't have got, done well, it, I, finished. I, 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 he sat in this patch of light <laughs> and he was, he was really lovely. The little lad was lovely. And he sat in this patch of light. It was outdoors. I start, always start outdoors if I can because it, with portraiture, particularly with kids, mm. it's, it's more disarming mm. to be out in daylight before I put them into a, you know, Just, all, the, all of the lights and yes, the stands yes. and everything. I hit the button. I looked to the back of the camera to check the exposure was right. Not that it was the exposure right. It was nailed. And I yes. showed her and laughed. And said, what do you want to do for the next two hours? Yes. And that luckily for me, she laughed. And then we had this wonderful session. The most yes. beautiful photos. So, Fantastic. so happy. And of course, as a, as a creative, when somebody comes in and says, do your best. Yes. Basically, not, I mean, don't do your best. Create the best thing yes. that you would ever dream it's of. Exciting. It's exciting. It's tremendously exciting. Yes. And I think with when you start training photographers, somehow... That's an innate op- opportunity. It happens as part of that contract. Mm. Sh- you know, and I'm, I, I nearly used to show off, and I think that's possibly right mm. because part your part of what you have to do is to make it achievable. That's a big chunk of it. Mm. You have to show or illustrate some skills that mm. they can take away, something mm. they can take away and use. Mm. But also, it's freeing because right, I'm going to show you how we create one of these. Let's have a go. Yes, you yes, know, and I love that. And I think also, particularly in newborn photography, there's a lot. I see the industry changing. Yeah. I see a shift in newborn photography. I'm seeing it move away from the very, very posed. Yeah. Um, and you'll see, certainly I'm doing much more natural. I have, I do, I offer two things now. I offer the stylized, yeah. very, very posed yeah. babies, you know, yeah. beautiful, beautiful work. And now I've literally just put up on, with permission from a, a client a, on Facebook, my Facebook page, very natural baby, just doing what baby does. No props, getting the light perfect and just a beautiful image of a baby. You don't, doesn't need anything else, yeah. just pure baby. And I'm seeing a bit of a shift towards that. So I, I always want to... What do you think's to... driving that shift? I think that... <sighs> It's difficult. I'm, do you know? I'm not actually sure what's driving the shift in it. And all. I think maybe it's been perhaps slightly too overdone. Yeah. Possibly. Um, I think. That, but there are. There's also going to be. You know, a, a selection of people who don't like the very posed images. Mm. Um, and I love them. But since having done, you know, the more natural, I love that just as much yeah. because it's just pure simplicity. You know, you don't need anything else with a baby. But actually, if you look at my work generally, even the posed, the stylized photography that I do, there's not a lot of, there's not what I would call clutter around the baby. Yeah. It's, it's, they're very clean. They're very clean, um, elegant, refined images. They they don't have lots and lots of props. They don't have lots and lots of flowers or, and that can look very beautiful. Um, but it's just not my my style. I did, I did a commercial gig the other day, and the brief was to not be so clean as normal. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I've had the dirty. We had to approach it in a way it's slightly different, dirtier shots. But yeah, and, and one thing I know, um, I've spoken to you about this a lot, 
um, is the safety aspects of newborn photography. And I know, I mean, I was trying to figure out how to word it so that you get a chance to do a bit of tub thumping about health and safety. So here's your opportunity. Why are you so vociferous on the health and safety I aspects? I am, oh, I'm passionate. I'm devoted to it. Um, I am, I, I mean, part of this will come through my legal background. Yeah. And I know how easy it is to be sued. So there's very much, there's that, there's the legal yeah. head, there's no doubt about yeah. it, yeah. that is very much, if you do this, if you if you harm a baby, God forbid, your career's over, you'll be sued. But forget any of that, you've just ruined somebody's life and somebody's parents' life. I mean, that is huge. Mm. Um, I, I'll be completely honest with you, I am fed up to the back teeth Paul's grinning at me now, but I'm fed up to the back teeth of I, seeing... I opened the door to you this. Opened you opened the door, you've <laughs> asked for this, you've asked for this. I am fed up to the back teeth of seeing photographers take unnecessary risks because all the risks that photographers take with newborns are totally unnecessary. They're not necessary. And it ranges from overheating a room to overwrapping a baby, wrapping a baby too tightly. They froggy pose. So I think it's manipulating a baby a bit too much. But also... It's the lack of thought about the airways. Yeah. So people think that actually a froggy pose is safe if you're doing it as a composite. But that actually, although, yes, of course, it should always be done as a composite, the issue really is the compression of the... Yeah. Oh, I'm doing it now. If you yeah. press here, you, yeah. you've got floppy, much floppy airways. And a, you know. So I should, I should just say for the, for the listener of the podcast, <laughs> Melanie is poshing her own throat to yes. illustrate, but this, yeah, where there's no pictures. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so it's, So there's, you know, there's... And I and I also seen it seems to be very trendy now to video a baby on Instagram, um, unsupported. Now and I should point out not all photographers do that. Some photographers are incredibly sensible, and there's nothing wrong with with your as long as you've got the client's permission. There's nothing wrong with videoing your tiny little client in a bucket or whatever they're in, as long as their head is supported and they can't fall. But when I see photographers who are baby's looking very cute and they're you know and they've got a spotter but the spotter's not near enough and even then that baby should be supportive and they're they're putting a you know behind the scenes video and I'm thinking what what are you doing mm. that baby at any moment could startle and end up on the yeah. floor so I mean I kind of know the answer to the next part of this question which is do you think qualifications yes. <laughs> <laughs> should before Melanie dived in incorporate <laughs> the safety aspects yes i absolutely do and i think i would like to see the newborn um newborn photography regular i mean i'd like to see the entire industry regulated yeah, but i but i think particularly newborn photography and it is something that i am working with with a consultant pediatrician um because we are both of exactly the same view and i've worked you know i've i've made it my mission to understand the risks involved yeah. Yeah. you know babies they're not just tiny humans they are structurally different yeah and I think the more that the more that photographers understand that, you know, the better it will be. Yeah. Um, and I think really, you know, there's just there's just so many risks that photographers are taking. They're totally unnecessary. And I and I've made it my mission to teach photographers actually, you know. And I think some of the risk is that you watch online videos, yeah. and particularly prevalent in um, America, where you'll see photographers teaching and they're showing babies unsupported. And, and and so if you're new to the industry or even if you're not new to the industry, you're thinking, well, so-and-so does it. She's very famous out there. She does this unsupported. It must be fine. But actually, it isn't. It's yeah. never OK. And we're going to move on from that. But you kind of opened the doorway there to do another podcast at some point uh, mm. with you about the safety aspects or whether we involve a paediatrician and do something about... I think um, yes. I think it'd be. I think well, I think it'd be fascinating. Yes, absolutely. Because yes. of course, you know, it, I, I agree with you. I think it's tremendously important. And I also, there's there's actually there are, there are good arguments for and against a regulated photography industry. But I do think it should be a little less wild west. I think so. I mean, I think I I don't I think that newborn photography should be regulated. Yes, I think um, be, yeah. because of the risk to babies. Yeah. You know, you don't have the same risks with a newborn baby that you do when you're photographing a 10 year old no you don't there are other risks with the 10 -year -old. there are other risks with the 10 year old but but it's <laughs> not a good 10 year old have a have a meltdown absolutely but it's, it's not the same they're no. not the same things 
So yeah. that, I think that'd be an interesting topic all in its own. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to move the, the kind of things on a little bit from that because I know you could talk about that for about an hour, which is about the length of a at podcast. Least, at least an hour. Which I think would be a great podcast. <laughs> so we'll revisit that at some point. Um, but as, I, I mean, staying with the theme of training and you kind of mentioned Italy. So you have various aspects of um, training as a as a newborn photographer i do uh, and you also have uh, your book and i think let's start with the book the art of newborn photography yes which is a lovely book i have a copy you sent me a copy very kindly which is really lovely of you it sits on our shelves i have this library you know you've got to think of another book though at the end don't you? i'm not letting you get away with that the addition to our i was library. going to say mine you well, can't you know, do that i'll all, immediately yours, say yours is already on my library <laughs> You okay. also can't do uh, The Mastering Secret Barrister because I already own that one as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or Mastering Portrait. What about Mastering Portrait? Because I have, I have yeah. that, you yeah, see. Yeah, you I can't have, your have book. that either okay. German, Italian or English. None okay. of those already exist. It's a bit like um, Desert Island Discs. You've got the complete works of Shakespeare and you have the Bible yeah. on that, don't you? <laughs> yes. You can't have those. So yes. you're going to have to, you've got about the next 15 minutes to think of one. Okay. Uh, however, I was going to talk about the book and ask you um, whether you enjoyed putting it together. And it was a bloody nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's a whole, anybody who's written a book listening to this podcast is now applauding you. Yep. <laughs> um, well, okay. I think um, there are elements that I certainly, yes, I enjoyed. I mean, certainly putting together your knowledge. Um, it's actually a great way to see how far you've come because it's almost like, you know, you're collating all these notes that are in your brain yeah. um, and putting them together in a, in yeah. a book. I yeah. mean, it's, it's great. And I can remember when the publisher said to me, we need 50,000 words. And I remember thinking, oh, how the hell am I going to do that? Yeah. Um, but actually, it's, it was manageable. Actually, yeah. I think it did 45. I couldn't quite reach the 50. But, um, but yes, you That's know. a lot of credits you could have added at the end. Lots of, yeah, um, extra credits. Extra, yeah. Who else can I think of to put Technical in here? Technical notes. <laughs> <and> <laughs> the, yeah. How many more camera settings can I add? Yeah. Um, but uh, but I, so collating sort of the notes that were in my brain, if you like, and putting them down on paper um, was extraordinary. Actually, it was it was it was very enjoyable. Yeah. Um, choosing the images for the book um, that was lovely, um, very lovely indeed. Um, and and actually seeing it then come back and seeing the proof come back was really something else because until you actually you send a you know a pdf yeah. copy you know on, on your email and it's you know oh, that's nice but you didn't really until you then you sort of the cover comes through the post and you think oh wow yeah. and then the book comes through with seven complementary copies and you think oh my goodness seven i got two seven seven, seven. or six i think i might have got I, think that. I, think seven I need to have a chat with my publisher <laughs> yeah so so i think um and, and then actually holding it in my hands thinking gosh this is actually real now um it was enjoyable. It, nobody ever really writes a book um, on photography to make money. Um, it's not something. It's a very niche newborn photography. It's yeah. a very niche um, subject, but it's it's selling really nicely. Um, and somebody once said, "Would you write another book?" And I think the answer probably would is a possible no, because of the amount of time it yeah. took. It's a big distraction. Big, it's it? a big distraction because remember. The same as you when you wrote your book, you're still running a business at the yeah. same time. So you've got to find the time to write a book yeah. and think about what you're doing. You know, you think about what, what do photographers need to know? What do they want to know? You know, what, which, which images have I got that actually explain yeah. what I've just written? Yeah. You know, and, and, um, and actually, does this come across in plain English? Because when I write, yeah. <laughs> I'm quite... <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm quite... Um, business structured if you like yeah. and I had to really keep going through it and thinking actually this is you know, this needs to be softer it needs to be readable yeah um I, d I had a lovely conversation with someone in forgive me if this person is listening and I think they were in Denmark certainly it was that kind of Scandi area and he said that the the steps you put in the retouching section at the back we only added that in really at the bequest of the publisher mm to show that you don't just hit the button and your image is done. Yes. It's to show there's other stuff. And it's not, you could write, and I, I own these books. You could write a whole book on Oh, you could have, make a whole career talking yes. about retouching. Yes. So this wasn't that, but it's just this, I just said, well, very quickly, here's some steps. Here's how to drop a background in, normal kind of stuff. And he's, he got this email saying, it doesn't work. I'm really cross. I've given you <laughs> like three stars rating on Amazon or something like that. So I kind of, okay, one night I sat 
and poor old Sarah's asleep next to me and I'm sat with my laptop on my legs going through the book. I've got the book yeah. next to me yes. as, it, as in the yes. printed version because yes. I'm adamant. No, it works. And I went through it step by step by step. I brought out the same images because I've still got them on in folders and went through it literally step by step replicating mm. it on a laptop and recording each screen grab. Mm. And I got to this one line and it, I read it the way I would, would say it. Mm. It worked fine. And then I read it the way... Someone else might read it. Yes. Didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is... no matter how many times I tested the damn thing. Yes. And I wrote him this email. I said, ah, yeah, I got you. In the, if we ever get to do, we've done reprints, but yes. we've never done a second edition. No, this is, you see, this is the same thing with mine. I wanted, they said, we need to do another print run. Yeah, and I said, oh, ISBN. can I, actually, yes. And I said, oh, can I, because I thought oh, I can add yeah. things. I'd, I'd add much more on safety. I'd, you know, add, a change edition. a couple of images. No, you can change a couple of images, which they allowed me to do. Yeah. But um, no. Because you can't keep the same ISBN. That's right. I mean, then we have to relaunch it as a brand new That's book. Right. Yeah. And so... And everyone gets very uptight yes, about that. Yes. So I emailed him and I got this lovely note back that's saying, oh, that's amazing. Yes, of course. I've given you your five-star rating and I'm now recommending you to all of my Scandi friends. And it was, it was, yeah. that was me sitting in bed. Oh, damn it, I got that wrong. You know? Do you know, I had... Um, so I stopped reading the reviews from Amazon. Yeah. Um, they were all five-star, 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 and then two-star. Two-star? Who's yeah. giving me two-star? Yeah, yeah, it's horrible, that. Arrived damaged. That's all he yes. said. Yeah. I had one that I got across about. He said, this is clearly an, a, a pair of, of English authors. Why are they using American spellings? And I went back yes. through it and we'd submitted everything to the publisher in English with English yes. spellings. Yes. And of course, they've got a bigger market in the US. Yeah, so they're it. going to... So they, they translated everything into US spellings. And I got slated for it. And it's like, well... I didn't even know they had. Yeah. And it, those reviews are really... You kind yes. Of, oh. yeah, it's, it's the things, <laughs> you know, that you do? can't do anything about it. Yeah. Arrived damage. Well, that's Amazon. Yeah. That's, that's not me, you yeah. know. Um, but, uh, but no, writing the book, it, it was enjoyable. The reason I initially said it was a nightmare is because it took up so much time. Yeah. And I had quite naively, when I had said I would, yes, I'll do it, yeah. when they asked me to do it, I, I hadn't really thought through how long it was going to take. Yeah. Um, so it was a, yes, it was a... <laughs> it's a big undertaking so uh moving on from uh the art of newborn photography the book there's now uh the art of newborn the training yes and now i'm going to get this title wrong so you might as well tell me the title you're using when you're working with claire louise because there's two different strands to your there training. are so there's the art of the newborn is my training business yeah. um which has been uh well, nearly a decade um, of training photographers and then um, Claire Louise and I work together so just for anyone that doesn't know Claire Louise is another f tremendous photographer yes yeah, she is uh, a little bit of a free spirit me and her used to have a long conversations about <laughs> wings and spirit and all that kind of stuff. She she's is, a fine art photographer she's a fine art photographer she's also a creative coach yeah um, and she has an incredible ability to find out what is holding you back because in, with a lot of photographers who aren't succeeding in their business, there's usually something holding them back from yeah. that. And she has an incredible ability. Um, now, I can teach. I teach a lot of photographers business, how to run a business, um, how to uh, how to price, how to sell, all of those things, um, how to maintain a profitable business. But actually, what I can't teach them is how to how to deal with what's holding them back, how to find out what's yeah. holding them back and how to deal with that and move on because that that's not my specialty, but it is Claire Louise's specialty. And through all of the time when I've been teaching photographers, I've seen just with some, not all photographers, but some photographers that there's things holding them back there. Um, so I asked Claire Louise, so this is the, so I taught in Italy by myself for the previous two years and then thought I'm going to ask Claire Louise to come along this time. So we developed the art and soul of newborn photography i knew i'd get that wrong <laughs> i am the art and claire louise is right. the soul and we work together brilliantly um because when you first work with somebody you don't know how well you're going to work together i mean claire louise and i've been friends for quite a long time but you don't know and there's that kind of risk you know how how's it, how are we going to gel together but actually we work brilliantly together um and the feedback from Italy was fantastic. Um, so the art and soul is, it incorporates, it's me teaching lighting and the art and the creativity. Yeah. And Claire Louise also teaching creativity, how to be, how to get that creativity and how to look for it because it's everywhere that you yeah. look. But also what's holding you back in your business or in your life 
and how to move on from that to make a success of, yeah. of what you want to do. And she's so, very, very good at so it. So almost a variant of uh, life coaching, motivational coaching. Yes, absolutely. Finding yeah. a little bit of yourself and letting yes. it get out there. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. So you're running another one of those next year? In conjunction we are. With we have, yes. Um, so Graphic Studio, very kindly, are having us back. For, this will be my fourth year. Claire Louise is second, so our second together um, in June. I should have the dates. They will kill me. But I have yeah. today. I think it's the 9th of June for a week, um, which mm-hmm. will be amazing. And we've also very excitedly been asked to teach in Canada. Um, so that's in April. The Professional Photographers of Association of Canada have invited us out. Um, and we're then doing it again in Canada in October. So what I'll do is I'll get those details from you and I'll drop them in the um, episode you. notes below. Lovely. So people can click and go and have a look at what you're doing and if there's availability. Wonderful. Uh, can come and join you in Italy or if I fancy f- travelling further afield <laughs> well I, I say that we have a lot of listeners in Canada who might want to come and yes. see you in Canada because yes. that would be their local their local hop absolutely local. Uh, which would be absolutely amazing I was going to just very quickly uh, round off some of this and, and talk about a little bit of something that I know a lot of photographers struggle with and I was going to ask you how you've overcome it and the question is how do you get to the point where you enjoy the selling process as much as the photography or do you i love the selling process yeah this is um, common with people who've been successful and mm, enjoy the sale. i love it um i look forward to it yeah. i i love it just as much as creating actually did you always no i didn't um because initially i didn't sell product right initially i sold digital images when i first yeah. started out i sold digital images on a disc which are now of course not readable yeah and that's the problem with inherent problem with digital images don't get me even started on that that's a whole new podcast yeah, that's a different podcast again. <laughs> um but but yes um so i didn't initially sell a product um and then a couple of years well a couple of years maybe a year 18 months down the line i thought oh, i need to be selling i realized my spend was being capped i thought what am i doing this is yeah. ridiculous and started to sell product um the reason i love um the sales session the ordering design session yeah. is because I can show my clients, and I insist on it, I can show my clients their images exactly how they should be seen on a colour calibrated monitor. Yeah. Uh, big. How they're designed to be seen. Yeah. Uh, the clients don't have any distractions. So they're not looking at them on an iPhone. Yeah. Tiny little screen. <laughs> with they, their text alerts coming up. And with, <laughs> with everything else. All the distractions <laughs> yeah. that, that everyday life brings you. Um and I don't believe in hard sales, so I don't hard sell to my client because I wouldn't like that. And I don't believe it does you any good as a business whatsoever. I want people to buy my images because they fall in love with them, not for any other reason. Um, I offer great products. I use Graphy Studio. So, and when I, the first time I started using Graphy Studio, the first time I got, I started, it's HD Fine Art Printing. Not HD, HD Fine Art, anyway. Oh, that's just... I'm sure, I'm sure Jeremy, Jeremy will, will correct, correct me. Yeah, Jeremy yeah, yeah. will correct me. But, but goodness me, do you know, I actually had tears rolling down my face the first time I saw my work. And I'd offered other products before then. Yeah. But the first time I saw Graphic Studio HD Fine Art Printing, I, my work, I thought, my God, this is on another level. And I, I just fell in love with it. And, of course, my clients fell in love with it. Um, and... And I love seeing, I love showing clients what the possibilities are. Yep. Um, and clients of mine also, they know it before they, you know, initially what they, we know what we're shooting for. We already know what we're shooting for generally. So it's the excitement of being able to design, to show them what's, what's possible, you know, with the work that we've created. Um, and, then, and then having them collect it. I love that. Yeah. And seeing their faces. Yeah. And just seeing, and you know, often parents will, mothers in particular, will cry because they're seeing a tangible, this beautiful, tangible, say, reveal box yeah. with these images in it, beautifully matted, and they're looking, thinking, that's my baby. Yeah. Do you make a point of having the picture when they come and do the pickup? Do you make a fuss of that, that whole session? Is that a thing with you? So we do, for instance, if someone comes to pick up, let's say, a piece of wall art, yes. we've got it on a big easel with a spotlight on it. So when they come back to the studio, that's their first impact. No, I don't do that because my studio is teeny tiny. Um, and I don't, I've normally got it set up for another session. It's, it's bigger than 12 foot by 8 foot. It's now, bigger right? than 12 foot by 8 foot. I should, I should point out we've moved on from there. We are we are 30 square metres exactly. No, I was going to ask you about having a home studio, but I think we're going to run out of time. No, that's maybe, fine. Maybe for another podcast. That's fine. Um, but... Um, 
Uh, no, I don't. I mean, I, I, I show it to them. Of yeah. course, I, I take it out of it. You know, it's, yeah. it's packaging and I will show it to them and show them every image and they will, you know, love it and, and, and talk about it and, and all of those things. Um, but I don't have it under a spotlight. No. <laughs> but the whole process it's of a doing lovely, the review. Yes. It's just, uh, I can't remember why we started doing it. I think because it gave us an opportunity to slow them down. Yes. And ask things like, could you give us referrals? Could you give us recommendations yes, yes. and reviews? Yes. Those things. And it was much easier to do that if I was, <laughs> if I, yes. you know, got the impact yes. of them seeing it. for uh, Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, I, I go through everything with a client, you know, show them, you yeah. know, if, it, if it's um, wall art, it's, it's you know ready for them to see and it's it's a real real book the real books they look at all the prints separately and you know all those kind of things um but but i love absolutely love um the design and and um ordering appointments because i like to see their reactions mm. where do you think people's nerves of the sale of the sale room sale process come from i think it's a lack of self-confidence mm. um i think it's a lot of photographers certainly tell me that they don't like it's, it's funny we they're working in a creative industry where face to face is key because you're a yeah. photographer yeah. and yet they don't want to be doing for them it's easy I'll put it online because it's either a self-confidence issue yeah. um, that they are worried that maybe they won't like the work or they just don't like they, they don't know how to deal with the whole selling process yeah. and I think they photographers think um I need to hard sell. Well, that's not true. You, you don't yeah. need to do, shouldn't yeah. ever need to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think it, it's also, they, people worry about being asked about discounts and they, they don't know how to field questions. Dealing with objections. Dealing with objections, any possible objections that might yeah. come up. Um, and they just don't like the whole face to face. And they see it as a confrontation as opposed to actually an amazing appointment. Yeah, over the years, I've, I've grown to love it. Yeah. There's something hugely liberating about that moment when you yes. think, actually, do you know what? It's lovely. Yes. They're going to sit there and they're going to see these pictures we've created together. Yes. Um, they're going to have all of these memories, the same as I do. Mm. And even if they're throwing up objections, they're almost always objections about what they have the availability to, to spend. Mm. And that's out of my control. Mm. I'm not going to get stressed about that. Mm. You know, mm. we had a lovely lady came into the studio and, and she was up front with us. So she actually emailed us the week before and said, look, I've just been made redundant. Do you still want to see me? Mm. This was between the shoot and the reveal. Mm. And we said, yes, of course, because at the end of the day, we want you to enjoy your images. She loved them. She mm. hadn't got any money, clearly. Mm. Or she, you know, was looking to the future. Mm. Um, and bless her, you know, clearly not an ideal sales session. Mm. But a wonderful moment to show. But her a wonderful pictures. moment actually yeah, to show her yeah, her, her her pictures. You know, and, th and it takes a bit of confidence, and it also takes a little. I think it takes a little bit of longevity. I think you have to have been doing it a while, mm. and that you know tomorrow there's going to be exactly. Shoot. And and I think also I think that once you've done it once, I say to those to whom I teach, look, once you've done an ordering session once, and you know nothing terrible happened. Yeah. <laughs> you know they didn't burst into tears because yeah. they hated the pictures. Yeah. You know once that's not going to happen, you know it's easy from now on. It's yeah. fear. Yeah. And fear yeah. is is a is yeah. a huge thing that will prevent you from doing something, obviously. Yeah, I think that that's absolutely true. But I do think people should take the time to learn the sales room as yes. much as they learn yes. the photography aspects because once you get your head around that, yes. everything becomes so much more fun. It does. It becomes fun and, and yeah. it's you know and also I believe that you're only doing half a job if you're putting them online, possibly you're doing. Yeah, because I think I it's think your so. duty really to show your clients those pictures um, yeah. properly. I, th I think the big question is to ask, and I do this every session, is to ask myself, why are they here? Mm. They're here to buy something. Mm. And, and that's the minute I first meet them, they're here for me to create something. They've they already buy. decided that they're going that's to spend right. money. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Well, they, we, we can have a debate about how much. Yes, <laughs> but exactly. But they've already decided, they've booked you, but they've already decided the, the easy part's done. Yeah. They know they're here to spend money. That's right. It's what you create. Yeah. And I think that's a lovely thing once you get to that, that point mm. of enjoying it. A um, couple of last questions. If you could change one thing about this glorious industry of ours, and I'm going to group all photographers together into one, <laughs> which is possibly, we can ignore the fashion photographers. They're out there on a limb. Uh, but everybody else, what would you change? <laughs> God. <laughs> I don't know. What would I change? Well, you see, I'm looking at it from a newborn newborn point of view. Okay. Um, because obviously that's my specialism. All right, this one with that. Um, so we'll have that one. Um, what would I change? I would have the industry regulated. Right. So let's see if we can get a th something about that one then, shall we? That's that's what my plans are. Um, I want it regulated, yeah. I think um, that'd be a good thing. Yeah. That's what I'd change. 
Wonderful. Right, last question. And you know it's coming. Which book? This is, as I keep saying in our podcast. It's there on the coffee table. Oh, you've actually got one out. I have my... It <laughs> Darcy is, Boss. No, before. not that one. Oh, not that no, one. No. I quite like that book. It's beautiful. Not that one. It's the, the icons... Civil War in 500... Which not... one am I reading? You've got a pile of books. <laughs> not that one. It's the icons of photography. Oh, right, so th- four books down. Yeah. You're expecting me to have second guessed. Sorry. Fourth. Is it <laughs> there four it books is, down? She says, I haven't got my glasses on. I can't really see. <laughs> oh, I should dig it out. I should dig it out from this pile of books. It's the icons of photography. I love it. Okay, so the book is Icons of Photography of the 20th Century. Uh, it's published by Prestel. I will put a link to that. We'll find... The, the, one of the great joys of doing this, which I didn't anticipate, I'll be honest, is that if you go onto Amazon and look for second-hand books, I looked for the one um, that featured in a podcast yesterday, which was the uh, Anita Roddick. The yes, Body Shop. The Body Shop. You founder. can buy a second-hand copy for a penny. Yes. Which is ridiculous. That's incredible, isn't That's it? That's a penny, really? The, the postage was like 20 quid, but you could buy the book <laughs> for a penny. <laughs> And I just think that's that's terribly sad because that's the way that's where our books are going to end up in yeah. you know twenty years time. Yes, uh, Melanie Murney is, but that's a wonderful book. I shall add that to our list. Uh, it truly, I can I've seen this book and I know that it's definitely worthy. Um, I will go it's get a myself a second hand copy so that it sits on our shelf. I've got this fantastic library, wonderful, a very varied library. Yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah. Um, what a lovely thing. So, on such a happy note, thank you for your time, My your pleasure. panda, and your incredibly comfy sofa, which I'm just going. <laughs> I'm just nestling in. You should see. I'm going to take a picture in a minute to show that how we recorded this because I'm sitting here in amongst the most beautiful. It's all reds and purples. Purples. Um, you're colour blind. There's no purples in here. Those are purple. To me, those are purples. They're red. They're not. That's a that's a bluish red. That's a purple. It's red. To me. Well, right. It's all reds. <laughs> it's reds and creams, and it's wonderful. And I'm sitting here, and it's just the most lovely thing. Lovely thing. So thank you very much for your it's time my pleasure. and your energy. Um, and what a wonderful interview. On that happy note, if you've enjoyed, I'm going to do my wrap up now. Is that all right? Yeah. I've never done one like this. That's fine. Norm- normally, um, I do it in a post, but I'm going to see if I can do the whole thing in one record because it'll save me a lot of effort. Go for it. Uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast, and me and Melanie really hope you have, <laughs> <laughs> praying. Yeah, that's right. Don't don't write in and say you haven't. Uh, then, of course, please do subscribe. To I'll try that again in English. Please do subscribe. Uh, you can subscribe wherever you get your regular podcasts. This one goes out on Podbean. It's on Stitcher, it's on iTunes, of course, it's on Spotify, and I think it's on Radio Public, and it's on numerous other places where this feed gets distributed. Uh, we'd love you to leave a review. That's a review of the podcast, not a review of yeah. Melanie. <laughs> Bless her, has got her head in her hands. So no, don't do that to her. Uh, leave us a review. Of course, we'd love to hear from you. If you've enjoyed the podcast, get up there on iTunes and leave us a review, because it's great, and it means other people will find us. If you haven't enjoyed it, if there's things we could change... Uh, then please do email me privately, uh, which is paul at paulkinsonphotography.co.uk. If you have any questions at all, then use the same email address. And until next time, remember. What have they got to remember, Melanie? You don't know, do you? Be kind to yourself. (laughs) 